We are now into the second half of this year, but not nearly so far into the production of the film. I'm not really sure where we are in the production of the film at all. I, I can't even assign it a percentage, but it feels like still somewhere very near the beginning, which I, I thought would be further along than this. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll, we'll talk. It is the week of the 4th of July parade. It is coming up this Thursday, and I talked about wanting to be in it last week. Last week I did the talking. It's this week to actually be in it. Um, I can't seem to get a hold of anybody who would be willing to participate with me. Uh, let alone a flatbed and a truck. So I think what I'm going to do, assuming anybody says yes, well, not anybody. There's, there's got to be more than two of us. If I can get a handful of guys to join in, what we'll do is just have somebody drive uh, one of my cars, one of my family cars. We'll have the trunk open, and we'll have some dumbbells and things in there they can pull out and use as we go down the street. And then boxes of, or bags of candy to throw out. That's kind of ironic, fitness, candy. But everybody throws candy at the 4th of July parade. Um, and then uh, the cards. Now the cards, I do have the cards. It's basically the same uh, as my actual card. You can see the ones I got from Vistaprint. Are we going on a year ago now? Anyway, they're glossy. These ones, um, Vist, uh, not Vistaprint, our local, the printing post, said, "Yeah, we can we can get you your uh, we can get your your get you your cards in time for the parade um, today." In fact, and uh, but but but. We can't do the glossy in time. So I, I said, that's fine. That's got kind of a... If that were paint, that'd be almost an eggshell gloss to it. So that works for me. That's fine. Uh, I've got a thousand of these to hand out. I will say thank you to the Printing Post. If you're ever... If you're in Redmond... Let's see if I can get a good... There we go. If you're ever in Redmond and need a good print job done, they they do a good job. I've used them before. The big news is that when I got home earlier today, I saw a package sitting on the kitchen table. Hello and welcome to what was supposed to be an epic unboxing video of an epic gift from a wonderful new friend. I just recorded a 15 to 20 minute opening of a shipment live, uh, never before opened tape, pulling out this thing. It was awesome. It was amazing. It was wonderful. Only to discover that through some oversight of my own, not one bit of it actually got recorded. Uh, I had a family member say, well, just tape the, back, the, tape the box back up and, 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 and fake the whole thing. And I just, I don't have it in me. I, I, yeah, I, for, for a movie, we can do retakes of scripted lines. For a journal, you know, it's just, it is what it now is. And I am bummed because it was a moment of beauty in my life. I'm still happy to share with you the results of that moment of beauty, and I'm still very happy to share what I'm about to share. I'm just really kicking myself that I don't have the moment on video. Anyway, um, I've mentioned him before, uh, I don't know if I've used his full name, uh, but let, let's go ahead and just briefly tell the story that I am acquaintances online with a young man in Montreal named Daniel Bronovitsky. And uh, he fairly recently took a, uh, a deep and intense interest in seeing my film, The Better Body Starter Kit for Men, get made. Uh, we were talking recently about the fact that I have a 4K video camera, uh, but what I don't have is a computer that will handle 4K footage. That's a very, uh, very high-level, uh, large-file codec for video recording. And my computer, my Mac, is quite old. 
uh, the family PC will at least let me load the footage and look at it, but trying to edit any of it just bogs the whole computer down. He started asking me random questions about laptops, about whether I like laptops and things like that, and um, I thought we were just talking shop. And I think a, a few days after that, he said, check your PayPal. He's donated before, so I was expecting two or three hundred dollars to put toward the film, however was needed. Um, this was a four-digit figure that he earmarked for the purchase of a MacBook laptop with enough... Uh, RAM, speed, ROM, whatever computer terms are relevant, enough of all of that to handle the 4K footage, edit it at real speed, uh, so that I would be able to take the whole process of editing this film and move it forward. I've been keeping the footage, I've been storing it, keeping it safe, for the day that I would be able to do that. I had no idea the day would come this soon. So this is the part now where I would have cut into a rather large box with a sense of awe and talked about everything I was doing. But that's all over and done. Off camera. Off camera by accident. But I am still thrilled to introduce you to my new, uh, refurbished but new to me, Mac Pro laptop, courtesy of Daniel Bronovinsky in Montreal, Canada, who, by virtue of his previous uh, crowdfunding donations and this purchase, will now be listed in the final film as one of the associate producers. Uh, he is the first one to be listed as associate producer. I say one of, in case somebody else comes along with another um, extremely generous donation. But... Um, yeah, this is this is a very special day for me. I have a I have a lot of people who have contributed to my life dreams, and so this is not to um, minimize any of their contributions. So I, I should say this is one of quite a few special days in my life. The idea that a 17-year-old fitness enthusiast in Canada who I've never met would take this much interest in seeing my dreams come true. Yes, it's very, very touching. And my wife, who is sitting across the room, is probably going, he's about to cry. And she wouldn't be wrong. Um, anyway, I've already got it all set up in the introduction that you will never, ever see. Uh, <laughs> it's ready to be used, but uh, I, I will need a mouse um, just because I'm not a fan of touchpads. So I'll get a mouse, uh, and then I will download probably DaVinci Resolve, uh, because Daniel has DaVinci Resolve, and so we could actually shuttle our XMLs back and forth and work on the project together. And if you don't know what an XML is, don't worry about it. But anyway, um, yeah. Wow. I, yeah, I'm out of words. July 1st, 2024. So many things going on today, um, and this, I think, caps off a really, an, an, an already really good day. So thank you, Daniel. Thanks to everyone for watching this anticlimactic unveiling, <laughs> but uh, good things to come. And um, I'll keep you updated on the progress of the film, which will now move forward a lot faster than I had originally anticipated. I have already downloaded um, DaVinci Resolve to start, you know, getting used to that because that's the um, editing program. It is uh, DaVinci Resolve comes free. There is a or the, there's a free version. You can get the pro version, which comes with more stuff. Um, it's also a very common one. And Daniel Bronovinsky, who provided the laptop. Uh, uses it. So, one thing that is theoretically possible is that I can load all of the footage to a cloud storage somewhere, and uh, as he is someone who actually enjoys video editing, he can start 
putting scenes together as I get more and more footage. It's also the same software used by a local friend of mine, Paul Powers, who uh, ha every once in a while he'll call me up and see if I'm available to help him do any editing. And uh, uh, I'll go down there and, and use his stuff. So he could even, in theory, help out if he was interested. He uh, he runs an actual film produ or video production business, so he may not have the time to do anything pro bono. I totally respect that, but I will at least be talking to him about seeing how much he might want to be involved in the film, especially in the editing. And he is a whiz at the Resolve... Um, basically, in, in film terms, it would be called the color timer. And that is the person who makes sure that all the shots, after they've been filmed in all the various locations with the different film stocks and all that, he makes sure it all looks the same. The skin tones look right. All the scenes have the right tone. Because you can... Uh, in, in, in the course of, of film production, you can, uh, when, when you're shooting on celluloid at least, you can end up with, throughout the course of the day, you're shooting in one room, you're shooting in one or one set, and yet you'll get some shots that are, that are a little bit more green and some shots that are a little bit more blue, just because of how lighting was being moved around and... and different gels being used on the lights, things like that, you can end up with a scene that doesn't look coherent from shot to shot. The actors are great, the costumes are all consistent, you know, there's, no, there's nothing out of place from shot to shot, there's none of the gaffes, the, uh, the uh, inconsistencies, but the color shifts. So there's a guy who was responsible, back when it was all cell celluloid, of making sure that every shot had the right tone and it all matched. In the digital world, on Resolve, uh, uh, Paul, I've seen Paul work, and he just click, 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 and he says, oh, I like it that way, I like it that way, and then he lines up two shots, and they're off a little bit, so he'll use more widgets on this one and get them to look right. He's good at it. So there's that. I'll see if he wants to help. At this point, I have no new donors to celebrate. I have no new interviews to tell you about. I'm just kind of slogging through this. Uh, obviously, we got the 4th of July parade coming up. I now have the laptop. I will, I will move the footage onto here. That'll be, um, that'll at least be a backup, uh, as long as this has hard drive space. And it's got quite a bit. We'll see what it takes to fill it up. But, um, so that way I'll have the footage on two computers in case one goes down. I do need to order, uh, I, th I need to order an external hard drive specifically for housing of uh, the footage for this film. And that means I probably need to order two so that I have a duplicate set. So that if either one of those drives fails, I don't suddenly lose everything I've done. Now at this point, if I were to lose everything I've done at this point, that would be four interviews. Three of which would be fairly easily reshot. The fourth is a guy who moved, so he might just be out. And that's the news for this week on Brian's Big Movie which so far isn't that big of a movie, but, <laughs> but uh, oh man, I think I, I well, God, I started the year so optimistic because all, all of, there was, there was so much other non-activity, I thought, okay, surely, surely by now I've got, I've got enough, what, what cliche do you want, I've got enough eggs in a basket, I've got enough ducks in a row, that I can, that 2024 will be an interesting year. It will be a year worth blogging about or vlogging about. Oh, and yet you're still here. You're still here. I, I, I noticed that uh, the, the videos from May and June, there was a lot of me just sitting and talking, not even interesting cutaways. I'm getting, I'm getting lazy or, or just busy. I don't have time to make these videos as fascinating as I imagined they would be. Okay, well... Oh, well, I, I don't know what to say to that, except that I have to just push forward, and even if it continues to be kind of boring for a while, even if I don't have a lot to say to you at any given time, i got to just keep doing it, and, and eventually, eventually, this, this will be exciting, and these episodes will be interesting, and, 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 and more and more people will want to watch, and then we'll have a film that more and more people will want to watch. 